here sharing with you today a video on how to create your own fabric uh, stenciled album. Um, this one I did on my blog a couple days ago and I had a lot of questions about it. So I wanted to share with you a detailed video on how to create your own. Now with the video I share both the interior and exterior of this one but I also found one of my other albums that was just begging to be altered with stencils and I will show you the process on how I created how about this? This album. <laughs> and with that, uh, you'll get some tips on creating the depth of layers and, and a little bit of color theory, just a little tiny smidge in, of that, in there. But I hope you enjoyed the video, which is coming up right now. As you can see on the cover, there are many layers of paints and stencils. And I will get into that in just a moment. But first, I wanted to take a peek at the interior. So I did a cover page, and this was originally when I just had the stencils in just page protectors and in uh, binder rings. Um, but I, I love the, this little piece, so I thought I would include it as like a title page into the book. Um, these are my 6x6 stencils, and if you didn't know that the Crafters Workshop stencils come in 6x6, you've been missing out. Um, these these are great for smaller designs, for travels, and for just, um, they're perfect for almost any project. And I really, really love the 6x6. Six six. With these uh, smaller ones, what I've decided is just to use the 6x6 six six protector pages. And uh, these are, uh, we are memory keepers, and you can find a variety of them. You're just going to look for the 6x6 six six pages, and they work perfectly. With that, I also wanted to have the stencil to pop against the background, so I've created these 6x6 six six pieces, and you can see the stencil really stands out. Um, and that way I can get a good look at the design element of the stencil and know quickly what I want for my particular page. Now with the 6x6, six six, I decided to group them by um, likeness. So you, you can see here these are all trees. These are all landscape trees and I really like that. And because the page protector holds two of them I get front and back. So these like I said are all grouped by uh, their um, likeness and some of them are empty because I'm going to use some of these today. But it's really functional. Love it. Uh, I can carry this book anywhere and it makes me totally happy especially when you're going to crops and things like that and you're a stencil girl you want to bring those along so great for traveling it towards the back I have the 12 by 12 into full sheet protectors uh, now I don't know about you but I always seem to have an excess of sheet protectors so instead of buying more refills for my books what I do is take the other ones and if they don't line up then I just punch the holes and that's a great way to save them these however are in alphabetical order um, for it's easier for me to find them and I think what I'm going to do is slide in some construction paper and that way I can get two pages out of it instead of just one but that's down the road this is already done and I'm happy with it for now and and you know, when I have the time, I'll add to it, but I love it. I love having them organized. So now let's go back to the front cover and take a peek at that. So, like I said before, many layers, many layers of paints and many layers of stencils. And the thing to remember about this is that by layering the stencils and layering the paint colors, you're going to create depth. And I like that depth. I like the play of the stencils on top of one of another. Okay, so that's a look at this album, but let's get started with the Clean Fresh album. Here I have another fabric album, and I find that the fabric albums work best, or a canvas album. It's going to grab the paint easier, you're not going to have to do prepping, it's not going to slide off, so um, go with a fabric album, plus they're a little cheaper than the leather album, so this one is a fairly old one. It's from Scrapworks, which the company isn't even around anymore. But I love the album, and so I'm going to change it and add some stencils and create something of my own. Now, when you're doing this, what I would highly suggest to get those layers 
is you're going to need a variety of stencils. And I would recommend some smaller shapes. So like with these, you get the smaller shapes in it. Some fairly open shapes, which like we have the blazonry or the wonky circles, uh, fragmented flowers. These are more open and give you a lot more room to work in. Some open shapes, but a little bit smaller. These are great. Then you're going to want some more design elements, I would call them. So these have more of a definite design to them instead of just a background because that's really going to pop. And then I'm always a fan of like circles. So I think having a variety of circles is great. Now it doesn't have to be a large variety, but you just want at least one of those shapes to give it that depth. Okay. I'm also just using acrylic paints, and these are actually just student grade paints. They work perfectly fine, and I like the colors, and whatever I don't like. <clears throat> if I ever need a different color, I can just mix and create uh, the color I want. And then I'm just using cosmetic sponges. Simple, easy way to punch, through, uh, to pounce through the stencil. So with a nice basic black background, um, unlike the gray, so let me show you the gray. The gray had more open areas here, and I wanted to color that in a little bit so it's not just so just gray in the background. So you'll see areas where it's colored in and then where the stencils layer on top of it. But with the black being a neutral, I may or may not have to do that. We'll see. So just get started. All you have to do is really, literally get started. And I would save the smaller designs for last. These are what you're going to have the last elements on there. So start with some bigger designs, some more open designs, and just keep building. Remember, paint covers paint. So anything you don't like, you can cover up. Also, I think something to remember is mixing colors. Know your color theory. So any complementary color like green and red are going to give you a brown muddy color so you don't want to necessarily mix those but feel free to mix other colors like on the same side of the color wheel like purples and pinks or purples and blues and get some depth into your color so all you're going to do is take a cosmetic sponge and let's say I want to start with the fragmented flower and some blue I can just go straight into the blue and I want to pounce on and pounce off so it's kind of like wax on wax off like Julie says but you just want to pounce them on and pounce them off and you're just going to go into the stencil and pounce it down now because it's fabric it's going to absorb a lot of the paint so you may need more paint than you normally would for like a scrapbook page. Now, I also am a fan of just pulling in two colors without over mixing it so you do get that depth. And go over areas you've already stenciled on. I'm going to pull this up so we can see what it looks like. So already it's starting to have that color in there and that's beautiful. I love it. So what I'm going to do is kind of put this on fast forward and so you can see how I create the whole cover and we'll go from there.
semi-coated base, you know, there's uh, some open areas and some closed areas. What I want to go back to in is fill in. And maybe fill in with a little bit of the paint in the background and then start to fill in with the smallers. Now you can see because of the black the color has started really to fade in. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some white and take some lighter colors and really just pop the background a little bit so that when I lay my next layer of colors over it that I get um, some good brighter colors for me. Okay, don't think too hard on this step. You're going to layer more colors in, so don't overthink it. And you can go right over some of your other designs too. by me adding in this white background and stuff over top of some of the other stencils that you can see some of those stencils come through and you're creating those layers and you probably gasp when I went over that section there but guess what I can just go right back over it which was what my intention was because I really want those colors to pop <laughs> majority of it is filled in this is where I need to go back and be an art critic see what I like see what I don't like fill in the areas I really don't like and keep adding to it so you can see here there's some big open areas and I did save some of those because this is where you're going to add in those small details and nothing pops like adding in a neutral so you either want to go with black white brown even navy blue and some deep purples can be a neutral just depending on the overall colors. So with that I'm going to take some of these smaller designs and add in some blacks and whites along the background along with some of these uh, hearts because I really love the hearts and I like to make them stand out. <music> do is maybe go in and add in some more of this yellow so it really pops over on this side as well as this side and balance it all together. So that's simple enough. And because I have all these layers I can go right over something. complete. Of course I would do the sides and the back but for today I just wanted to show you the front cover 
and how you can layer the elements. You can see that once you start layering, you get that depth and you want to make sure that you're using um, a variety of colors to show that depth as well and to add in the blacks and the whites depending on what uh, color your album starts off with and ground the whole thing. So I hope you enjoyed today's video and I hope to see you altering your own albums and creating your own masterpiece. Thanks for joining me today. If you like this video make sure you check out my other videos here on YouTube and stop by my blog at rondapalazari.com.